click or drum machine live? Now we're hitting my favorite subject. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're, I think everybody's going to have, will eventually fa face the fact that you have to play with a click. It's so funny. I, like I said, I haven't been doing sessions for about two years. The last three months, I've been starting to do a lot of sessions, and here's what's been happening. I, I walked in to do a session, and I met this guitar player, Dan Huff, who I've heard about. It, I've heard about him. I've heard his name. He's like one of the new hot kids in town on guitar, doing lots of sessions. And Robbie Buchanan, great keyboard player, and it was Nathan East on bass. And Nathan and I are looking at each other, and these guys are flipping out because they've never played with a live rhythm section in the studio. And we didn't use click. And they were amazed that we got a great track without a click and that nobody was doing overdubs. And I'm looking over at the engineer like, man, what, am I 50 years old or something? Like, what has happened in the last two years with music? And what's been going down is, obviously, you must all be aware of dr all the drum machine stuff and lots of big albums. I mean, uh, there's been a, a lot of work that is taken up by Fairlights and Claviers. And that's been going down for a few years now, but what's happening all of a sudden, believe it or not, is people want to go back to using real drummers. And, and the reason being is they thought all this Synclavier stuff, all this drum machine thing, was going to be cost efficient. That was the number one reason. It wasn't because, oh, do we have to take a bunch of takes with a rhythm section until we get the magic one? Because what makes people have great reg records is captivating the magic that goes down on the record. And you're only going to get that with live players. You're not going to get that from a silly drum machine. And everybody's records sound the same. I mean, everybody stole a sample from this record or that record. So you hear five major artists, and they all have the same snare drum sound. And there's no dynamics, and nothing feels real good unless it's just a dance record that goes straight ahead. And what's been happening is a lot of people, I've been working, a lot of people have been calling me up to work wanting a real drummer. Because, number one, it's more cost efficient. Because I sit there and watch a guy try to program one drum part into a sync clavier. It takes him two days. I mean, for a good part. And I could have had my friends over and done the whole album in three hours for the guy. <laughs> and so I think they're starting, it's... It's believe, I mean, thank God, drum, the rhythm sections in general are coming back. People just want it because it feels great. And I always, what always cracked me up is guys, well, listen to these great synclavier sounds and the gated echo and the reverse this and all that crap. I'm going, well, man, why don't you just sit, put that stuff on a drummer? You, it's all outboard equipment. Why, if, why don't you, when you're micing my snare drum, add some gated AMS to the snare drum, add gate the room that I'm in, you know, get into some stuff. And people are doing that. So I think... There's going to be more, it's coming back to the rhythm section thing. It definitely is. I wouldn't say that unless I saw it happening before my eyes. But yeah, you have to play to a click, and a click is hard, and it's a good thing to practice to, is playing to a click. And here's the thing. When you leave here, if you ever, any of you get a chance to do, somebody wants you to do a demo, or you get your chance to go in the studio for the first time, they'll probably end up making you use a click. Probably. Now, when I say make and use a click, they're either going to have a Lin machine, and they're going to program some simple beat, and you're going to be hearing this Lin machine in your phones. You have to play that, or they're going to use regular digital metronome, which is just quarter note clicks or eighth note clicks. If you can, I would, I would request, instead of a Lin machine, I would request for a cl uh, digital click. Reason being, with a click, you can play behind the beat if you want. You can play on top of the beat if you want. But you can judge. You gotta dig, with music, most music, unless it's jive, disco, dance stuff, a verse will feel one way, the chorus should lift up maybe and feel another way, the bridge or the solo section should feel something else, and you sh it should be, stuff should be emotional. Now you can't be emotional when you're hearing a Lin machine in your phones and it's going <laughs> You can't be emotional, because while you're trying to groove, you have this stiff thing in your phones, and it's not fun to play with something stiff. With a click, you could say, oh, I'm in the verses, and you could sit there and say, and judge where you want to lay the beat to that quarter note you're hearing in your head. And when it gets to the chorus, you can play on top, and it won't freak you out, because in your mind you go, okay, I'm going to play on top of the beat. And you try to play consistently on top of that click, and that works out best. At least for me it does, you know. And, you, and it's good for you to help. If you're, if you're the drummer on a session, and whether it's a producer or an artist, and he says, okay, I want you to cut this with a click, and we did this drum machine program, through your own experimentation, whether it's you playing with a drum machine or with a click, if you feel better playing with a click, then recommend, say, hey, is it possible to do this with a click instead of the drum machine? 
you know, speak up for what you know you're going to perform better with. Because they don't care usually. If, if they're not keeping any drum machine program, then they don't mind. You ever use them live? No. No way. Uh-uh. Toto, the only thing we ever done, have done live is my brother Steve on an emulator would have background vocals on maybe two or three songs on the emulator. That means he has to key, key off, and you hear the vocals. Well, what I would do, there was the song Hold the Line, and the song Africa was sequenced, because it was all this percussion stuff and all this marimba things going on. What would happen is I had, um, my drum guy behind me had a little RX-11, a Yamaha, and it had, all I had was quarter note cowbell programmed in it. He would put up the tempo, he would punch up the tempo of say, hold the line. I would hear one bar in my monitor and he'd shut it off and I'd start the song. And when the first chorus came up, Steve would hit the hold the line and all of a sudden I'd hear that louder than hell in the monitor and I could tell if I was ahead of the beat or behind. And I could tell by the first couple of eighth notes and it was really not, you, we were never that off or anything. Because playing with clicks and trying to hear clicks in the monitors or machines and everybody else playing in a live situation, it can be really hard. And it, can, it could sound kind of funny. It can get a mishmash on stage. So we try to stay away from clicks on stage or in a live situation. Acoustic drums versus electric drums. <laughs> I, I, that's a personal. I mean, do you think it's coming back to acoustics now? Because it was kind of. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> I, can't, I personally can't stand electric drums, and every manufacturer knows I don't like them. And I think, I think electronic drums are ripping people off. They're, they're too expensive. See, I have friends. I mean, over the years, you get to meet people, and you know what's inside. You know how much it costs, the FOB, the manufacturing cost to make these things. And when you see what's inside, it's garbage. Sound-wise, I mean, I have, I've had Simmons 5s, and I've had to pay 500 bucks for a guy to make them sound decent. And I bought everything, Cooper t uh, chest. Uh, oh, I've got tons of electronic drum stuff, and I gave it all to my father. <laughs> no, because it's it's uh, to me it's a. It, I, I can't use the words to describe how I feel about it. <laughs> Number one, there's no. I mean, they they say, oh yeah, we have touch sensitive pads here. We got dynamics on drums. B.S. That's not no dynamics. What five dynamics, and you're saying you got dynamics? You know. Uh, Five increments of, no, it's, and they sound funny to me. I see how much people invest in their electronic drum rigs. Now, what they invest in electronic drum rig, if you spend, uh, how much is those Rev 7s, a couple grand or something like that? You know, the Yamaha Echo with all the presets. Well, if you just get one of those and just have acoustic drums, I can make my snare drum or my toms with one rack effect sound way better than a Simmons or try to make, I mean, you know, if you like that kind of sound, get your acoustic drum sound just as well, good. But all the triggers, all these guys have made me triggers to try on my acoustic drums. And I tell people, hey, if I can't go and you hear every little thing I just did dynamically and every other way, then it's a waste, unless I'm just playing one beat back beats and playing uh, this dance music, and they sound horrible, man. It sounds like a TV commercial. <laughs> boom, boom. But that's a, it's, I have a, it's my own personal thing about electronic yeah. drums. Yeah. <laughs> but they are cool. Uh, people, there are people who use them great. So you 